Welcome to worship with your Great Hill family for Sunday, May 10th, 2020. Today is Mother's Day, and in a typical year, the women of the church would be greeted with a carnation as we entered the church and hear our men's group sing for us during the service. This is anything but a typical year, so some of our traditions have had to adapt in the face of our current situation. Thank you to Joe and Adriana for spearheading the effort to email out a Mother's Day flower to all on our distribution list. And thanks to Peter Campbell for working his video magic to bring us an encore presentation of the men's group singing from our 2018 service. Another tradition we have is highlighting our mission work on the second Sunday of the month. Instead of spending a few minutes in the middle of the service to talk about our apportionments and the good work they accomplish, I instead ask that you prayerfully remember Fred Rogers' advice to children who watched a show and then act on it. He said, in a scary world, look for the helpers. How can you be a helper in the world today, whether here at home or for the people of the world far from us? Please continue in your acts of outreach and support through prayer, calls to the church family, participating in committee meetings online, using these new worship tools, and your faithful support of Great Hill through pledges and gifts mailed to the church or made online. At the end of the service, you'll see a few ways to make sure your donations continue to support worship and outreach here at Great Hill. We will continue to need that support through the coming weeks. As a community of faith, committed to sharing the love of Jesus Christ, I invite you to bring your hearts and minds into worship with the words of our meditation. Caring about others, running the risk of feeling, and leaving an impact on people brings happiness. Let us now bring the light of Christ into our places of worship. Please join me in our call to worship this morning. And Jesus said, come. To all mothers and all children, he said, come. To the motherless and the childless, he said, come. To all who long to be mothered, he said, come. Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble of heart. And you will find rest for your souls.
please join me in the opening prayer. Gracious God, on this day of the festival of the Christian home, the celebration of Mother's Day, the witness to the eternal love of Christ, remind us that we are responsible for caring for each other. We are called to lift up rather than tear down, to support rather than abandon, to reach out when others have turned away. Give us hearts of love that in all places and times, we may be a witness to the hope that is found in Jesus Christ. Amen. Our gospel lesson for today is from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Jesus, the way to the Father. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I will go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself so that where I am, there you will be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way of the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip? and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. Believe me that I am the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than those, than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The word of God for the people of God. Welcome, welcome to this worship service. May the Spirit of God bring us to close to him and the one or other at this virtual service. I often hear people saying, perhaps if I give my life to Jesus Christ, I will have no more problems. I will just trust in Jesus. It's not that simple. Often after we have committed our life to Jesus, our troubles are even greater. If we search in the Bible for a place where it says that life can be easy, we won't find it. The Bible never promises us no trouble and easy living. Even in our gospel lesson today, we hear Jesus saying, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in me and believe God. Trouble is everywhere. 
trouble will never go away. Trouble is a part of life. How then we deal with the trouble? How do we spell relief? A good answer is faith through prayer. Prayer is a way of seeing things from the highest point of view. When we pray, we are inviting God into our life process. We are asking God to be a participant with us in our lives. We are asking God to open our mind, our spirit, every avenue of activity, open the doors, open the windows, give us a path. When we pray wisely and persistently, we are trusting God, trusting the greater power to give us the wisdom of the universe and direct us. But first we have to trust and the trust and the trust. Several years ago, a friend of mine sent me an email with a wonderful parable about a man living in a cabin in the wood who woke up all night and saw a bright light shining in the cabin. He understood that it was God. God said to him, there is something I want you to do. The man inquired what it was and God responded, there is a big stone in front of your cabin. I want you to go out there every day and push and push and push against that rock. The man took God's instructions seriously. Day after day for many, many weeks, he pushed against the dead stone, but he could not move it an inch. After a while, an idea came into his head, which he understood to be the voice of the devil. Look, you don't have to bother with this. You have done your best. You want to succeed at this. Accept that you have failed. It is useless. Then just take it easy and do the least amount of work you can. Before the man would take that advice, however, he decided to pray. He prayed and prayed and prayed. God, I have done what you asked me. I have been very faithful. Every day for hours, I have been pushing against the dead rock, but I haven't not moved move it even an inch. I have failed. Then God, with a great compassion, answered, Son, you are not a failure. I asked you to push against that rock and you were obedient, I never asked you to move it. I asked you to push against it. Because you have pushed faithfully and diligently against that rock every day, notice how strong your arms have become. Your back is brown and strong. Your legs are massive. You are in such a better shape now than you were. You have learned 
a lot because you have been faithful and obedient. Then God said to the man, you have trusted me. Now I will move the rock. That is the way God dodges things in our lives. As a Christian minister serving and working with the people and in my life, I have seen some questions and struggles arise again and again. There are unavoidable givens, immutable facts that come to visit all of us many times off. First, everything is ever changing and ever dying. Second, things do not always go according to plan. Third, life is not always fair. Fourth, pain is a part of life. Last, people are not loving and loyal all the time. So these are the core challenges we all face. Also, we have no control of them. Travel is a part of life. So when life is getting you down, push. What does a push mean? Prayer until something happens. When you are having trouble on your job and the things not working out well, push. When the bills, and the bills are high and the money is low, push. When people are not responding to you in ways you have and want, push. When people don't understand you, push. Even when you have the fear of death, just push. Prayer until something happens. So travel is as normal and natural to life as we breathe in and breathe out. There is no way we can ever, ever avoid it, whether we are devoted Christians or not. So let me suggest this to you. You pray, pray, and pray, inviting God into your life to partner with you so that your troubles will be manageable and the opportunities to grow, to stretch, to get strong. Let your faith through prayer lift you up from the bottom of life. That is one helpful response to trouble that the gospel lesson today teaches us this morning. So God bless you and bless you to have the strength to keep praying and praying and praying until something happens. Let us pray. O oh Lord, for the blessing of the moment, for the challenges and obstacles we have, we thank you. But help us to pray, pray and pray to have enough faith, enough obedience to you to keep on praying to keep the faith. We ask this in your name. Amen. Sure, I speak for many of the men and the sons that are here. That on Mother's Day, one of the most difficult things to do is to find the right gift for your mother. We could give you flowers, but you already have flowers. 
we can give you the only thing that really counts. Brothers and sisters, and especially mothers, we give you our gift of love. Mother's Day. For our mothers who have given us life and love, may we show them reverence and love. We, we pray, pray to, to the Lord. For mothers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope, and may their family and friends support and console them. We, we pray, pray to, to the, the Lord. Lord. For women who though without children of their own, like mothers have nurtured and cared for us. We, we pray to the Lord. For mothers who have been unable to be a source of strength, who have not responded to their children and have not sustained their families. We, we pray to the Lord. Loving Mother God, like an earthly mother who gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless every Christian mother. Let the example of their faith and their love shine through. Grant, Grant that, that we, we, their sons and daughters, may honor, honor them always with a spirit of profound, profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please pray with me. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of life, for the gift of mothers and women, for the gift of love and wisdom. On this special day, we honor mothers. We ask for a special touch from you, Lord, for each and every one of them. May all of the work of their hands bear abundant fruit to their family and people around them. May her work not be forgotten in your sight. Let her love to her children be a guiding force in their lives. And may her wisdom be passed down to the next generation of mothers. Especially we ask for strength and safety to all of the mothers who fight the COVID-19 virus as nurses, doctors, and volunteers. Let them be strong, courageous, compassionate, to be like a good Samaritan. 
holy and gracious God, we pray for all the leaders of the world, for wisdom and compassion. We pray for our bishop and leaders and pastors for strength and guidance. We pray for those we name on our prayer list, Jamie Pronovist, who is in the hospital recovering from a C-section and multiple surgeries from her infection and for her baby. Donald and Beverly Palacio, parents of Donna Marcus, who contracted the coronavirus as they received treatment at Bridgeport Hospital. Dan for cancer, Kitty Newberg, Alex Marcus, Victoria Bradshaw, Alan McDaniel, and our shut-ins, Shirley Green and Joan Ford. For Sue Geisler, who will be having cancer surgery. We also pray for healthcare workers, including Lisa Brown, Priscilla Autorelli's daughter, Christina, Sonny Lee, Colleen Bodek, Sharon Narducci, Selena Guyon, and Christina. May they sense your presence, your power, your love, and your blessings they need in this time of hardship and difficulty. We also pray for our church families, Joy Sarowich, Sue, April, and Anna Snell, John, Tracy, Liam, and Shyla Steinberg Cummings, John and Corliss St Stormello, and Clifford Stormello Jr. May they be filled with hope, patience, and peace. We do this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Call forth in peace, dear ones. Bring hope to this world. Go forth in love, bring joy to this world. Go forth in the knowledge that God goes with you, loving and guiding your steps. And a happy Mother's Day. Amen. Although the light of the candle may end, the light that is Christ remains with us always. Happy Mother's Day. You are the light of the world. That was good. Mm -hmm.